Io non voglio. Non voglio, non ho bisogno. Grazie. You know, depending on how you feel, Rome is either the most historic city in the world, or it's the city of yells, bells, and smells, where every street vendor and sidewalk photographer is out to make a fast buck from the unsuspecting tourist. Well, take that couple over there. They're about to be charged 2,000 lira for a 500 lira job. Picture, for you a special price, only 2,000 lira. 2,000? Oh, Jack, who do you think you're kidding? I'm from Missouri, now come on. For heaven's sake, Eddie, stop haggling. We've only got 45 minutes for the Coliseum. We haven't even started. It looked much better in that Cecil B. DeMille movie. You think they'd fix it up a bit? Hasn't got a roof on it. I've seen him somewhere. Ada, I'm fried. Can we get a beer someplace? Do you know who he is? He's a celebrity. But who cares? I've seen in the papers that he was in Rome. Eddie, that's the famous Simon Templer. <laughs> Parlare inglese, signorina. Mille lire. You don't per... understand. You're making a mistake. Mille. No. Mille. Mille. Le chiede e trovo. No, no. Lei le chiede. Chiede? Chiede, però. Le... Chiede. Having trouble? Lei. Well, I think he's charging me too much, but I can't make him understand. Now, testa, quanto fa? Mille lire. Now, testa, le... Adesso, quanto fa? You'll take 300. But what did you say to him? Nothing. Nothing? He called me a liar, a thief, and an idiot. It's something which is not translatable even into English. Well, I'll take back the idiot part. You park your cab over there and wait for us. Wait? Me? Drive a man who has insulted Marco de Cesare? Never. I have my pride, senor. A thousand lira in advance. I wait in the taxi. I guess I have a lot to learn. This is my first trip abroad. Well, in that case, you must allow me to be your guide, philosopher, and friend. Uh, no strings attached, no obligations, nothing. Well, what do I call you? Simon. Simon Temple. Hi, Simon Temple. My name's Susan. Simon who? Temple. Eddie, did you hear that? I knew it was Simon Templer. We ought to warn that girl, and she's American. I can tell that. Ada, there's nothing we can do about it. Let's get the Coliseum over and go have a beer. Of course, the uh, Romans really did things on a big scale. Coliseum used to see 50,000 people. It was built on the site of Nero's palace. He was the emperor that was supposed to fiddle while Rome burned. We are now approaching That's the, the girl. Itself. Of course, the original floor doesn't exist anymore. Those walls and sections are what's left of the cells and dungeons underneath, where the Christians used to sit and wait and listen to the roars of the crowd and the screams of the dying. Can we stay here for a minute and just look at it? Why not, cigarette? No, thanks. These few minutes make the whole trip seem worthwhile. Scusi, signore. I di porto. Si.
don't I get here? I don't know, senor. I wait outside the Colosseo for you. If you don't come, so I go inside to look for you. <laughs> I find you, <laughs> unconscious. <laughs> I was going to get help, and the police arrived. And then, <laughs> and then. Go on, and then? And then they arrest me. They arrested you? What for? They thought I was trying to rob you. It's terrible, no? Terrible, but uh, how did you get my lighter? Oh, um, it uh, fell out of your pocket, and uh, I was keep it safe for you. My wallet, passport. No. Oh, no, no, the police have got them. Hey, guardia! Senor, senor, please, uh, you don't say nothing about the lighter, huh? You, I, I, I go to prison, and I got a wife and seven children, and what's going to happen to Relax, them? Relax, amico. All I want to do is get out of here. Hey, guardia, non c'è nessuno. Oh, senor. You are a very kind man. You make me feel ashamed. I, I'm going to be honest with you. I am not married. I couldn't care less. Seven kids are not married. Oh, no. No, you don't understand. I, I say this for you to be sympathy to me. I, I got no kids, no wife. I've not even got a girlfriend. A girl? What happened to her? Girl? What the girl? Well, the signorina, you tried to take her for a thousand lira. She was with me when I was slugged. I don't see her. When I found you, all I see was this American tourist. The, the woman with the big mouth and the little husband. Hey, Guardia! Off later! Oh, there you are. Um, my name's Harmer, Eddie Harmer, Indianapolis, Indiana. Uh, this is my wife, Ada. Good morning. What can I do for you? <laughs> well, I don't know just who we ought to talk to, but uh, we seen an American girl kidnapped in the Coliseum, and, well, we figured the right people ought to be told about it. Guardia! Hey, Guardia! You sure took your time. Here, come. What you get with eating spaghetti. Hey, what about me? You shut up. I'm a respectable citizen. I got a wife and 11 children. El Signor Templo, Stefore. Bene, fallo entrare. Si, signore. Avante. Come in, Mr. Templer. Are you in charge here? I am. Why am I being held? Sit down, Mr. Templer. I'll stand. I know your reputation, Mr. Templer, so do not pretend that being arrested is a new experience for you. What are you doing in Rome? I was enjoying myself. Is that a crime? No. The girl you were with, do you know who she is? I never saw her before. Hmm. Merely a, what you call a pickup. More or less. <laughs> Bravo. <laughs> not the way you mean it. I saw her outside the Coliseum. She was having an argument with the cab driver. Tried to overcharge her, so I helped out. Afterwards, we went in to look at the Coliseum, and someone clipped me. When I came to, I was in your guest house. I'd like to know why. Oh, sure. At the moment, you are charged with disturbing the peace, but the charge may be changed. To what? An accessory to kidnapping? Thank you very much, Mr. and Mrs. Harmer. You've been very good. And the man with her was that Simon Templer. We heard him say his name. Thank you very much for coming here. The matter will be put in the hands of the proper authorities. You here for long, Governor? Uh, about a month. Uh, Governor Inverest is chairman of the Italian-American Trade Commission. However, I'm afraid he does have an appointment. Uh, oh, sure, sure. Yeah, well, uh, <laughs> goodbye, all. <laughs> goodbye. Goodbye. Bye. Enjoy your stay. Uh, goodbye, now. Hudson. Do you think it can be, Sue? Sounds like it. But why on earth would Money, they do... probably. But we haven't any. Mrs. Inveress, to an Italian, being governor of a state, sounds like a big, fat bundle of U.S. dollars. Mr. Benson, I want to see the police immediately. Right, sir. I'll telephone Inspector Buono, and I'll have an embassy car out in front in five minutes. Sir. Thank you. Uh, sir, I talked to the ambassador on the phone this morning. He's going to fly in from London. He'll be here as soon as possible. 
In the meantime, the embassy is at your complete disposal. I appreciate that, Mr. Benson. Not at all, sir. I'll meet you outside in five minutes. Hudson, it's insane. It can't be... Maud, so on a given morning at 11 o'clock, how many American girls wearing a striped silk dress and a black straw hat are looking at the Colosseum with Simon Templer? Yes, the hat settles it. Governor, I give you my word. I never saw your daughter before in my life. I had no idea who she was. I believe you. Mr. Templer should be released at once. It's an incident. That's impossible. Inspector Buono, Governor Inverest is asking for Mr. Templer's release in the name of the United States government. Oh, there's no point in holding Marco, either. Marco? Oh, my cab driver. He's completely innocent. I hope you know what you're doing, Excellenza. I'll take full responsibility. Mr. Benson. Yes, sir? There'll be papers to sign. Will you see to that, please? Of course, sir. Mr. Benson is our head legal attaché. He'll attend to whatever formalities may be involved. And if I wish to question Mr. Templer again? The telephone number of the American Embassy is in the directory. Good morning, Inspector. If it's money they want, why don't they get in touch with us? It's four hours since it happened. Oh, I wonder if it is money. Governor, could there be some other reason, something connected with the job, something official? In what way? Well, you're chairman of the Italian-American Trade Commission. We're a fact-finding body. We don't create policy. Could it be connected with being state governor? Mr. Templer, what could there be official about being state governor in Rome? Hello. Sue, what's happened? Are you all right? Yes, Daddy. I'm all right. But please do whatever they ask you to. Ah. Governor Inverest, my name's Tony Anciello. Tony Anciello. I want you to drive out to Via Cassia to Kilo 45, where you'll find a dirt road running off to the left. Got it? I want you to drive up this road a thousand meters and wait. Oh, uh, Governor, come alone, huh? Except for your driver? I suppose it's money you want. <laughs> money? <laughs> Governor, I don't want money. I got money. All right. What does he want? I don't know. I'm to meet him at five o'clock on a dirt road off the Via Cassia. I'm to come alone except for a driver. He doesn't want money? No. Did Sue sound? Oh, well, she said she was all right. Oh, thank heavens. She also said that I was to do whatever they asked. On cello. Do you know him? Yes, he was deported from New York by the Justice Department seven years ago. He was one of the most vicious racketeers in the city. But if he doesn't want money, what does he want? No idea. Mr. Templer, I don't know how to handle this sort of thing. If you could help me, I'd... Where exactly were you to meet them? The dirt road runs off the Via Cassia, 45 kilometers from Rome. You uh, have a map of the district? Yes, I was using one this morning. Oh, could you have the embassy switchboard track down that cab driver? Marco de Cesare, cab number 11093. Uh, why? Well, he knows Rome like the palm of his hand. What's more, he owes me a favor. Or tell him to get him up as fast as possible. Right. Mr. Templer, I hope you know what you're doing. We're not interested in catching this man. We only want to get our daughter back. Alive. Marco, you sure you know what to do? Si, senor. He says that... Be... Well, what if... What's the matter? Are you afraid? Afraid? Me? Marco de Cesare? Afraid of Tony Uncello? Oh. I'm terrified. The governor will meet you downstairs in five minutes. Well, fine. Tell him I'll be waiting in the car. Right. <laughs> Is yes, Sue so your only child, governor? We had a son two years older. He... He was killed in a plane crash. I'm sorry. You can understand how Maud feels about any threat to Sue. Of course. Mr. Templer, I hope we're doing the right thing. It won't hurt to hear what Oncello has to say. No, 
sign of him. We're a little early. Governor Inverest? Where's my daughter? She's all right. For right now. What do you want? I want a deal. A life for a life. Do you remember Mick Keston? He's due to go to the chair in 48 hours. Mick Keston? Don't tell me you forgot. You signed his death warrant. Come on. Mick Keston is a vicious, ruthless killer. He robbed a bank in Burlington and murdered two men. Don't talk too mean about him, Governor. I don't like it. All right, what's Mick Keston to you? He changed his name a while back. Before that, he was known as Mick Anciello. You mean he's your... That's right. He's my kid brother. And you want a reprieve? Just as much as you want your daughter. See. I'm glad you see, Governor. Because if Mick dies, so does your daughter. You've got 48 hours. It's a fair exchange. A death for a death. Brother for a daughter. Think it over, huh? Ciao. <laughs> is guilty of first-degree murder on two counts. There are absolutely no legal or moral grounds for a reprieve. But there is so. And it's ridiculous to think that I have any choice. We do have 48 hours. Before we left the embassy, I briefed Marco. That dirt road bisects a secondary highway that leads back to Rome. With any luck, Oncello will lead Marco to Sue. What time have you got? Seven o'clock. Something's gone wrong. It must have. I have a hunch the marker's gonna come through, Mrs. Inbreast. Let's give him a little more time, huh? Yes? I see. No, nothing more. McKeston's execution is scheduled for midnight day after tomorrow. What can he gain by a reprieve? I don't understand. Time. Time for his lawyers to manufacture evidence for a retrial. Time to buy new witnesses. Who knows? Inspector, surely you can find this Uncielo. Well, he's known all over Rome, and the city just isn't that big. It is not easy, Signora. You understand? There are no charges against him here. He is not watched all the time. My men are searching, of course. But it is not simply a matter of walking into his apartment to arrest him. He is hiding. And you've no idea where to look for him? It is not made easy for us, Signora. 
What the inspector means, Mrs. Enverest, is that Tony Oncello is one of the top men in the Mafia. That means three quarters of the population are scared stiff of him. Well, there are thousands that would help hide him, and literally millions who would never tell the police even if they did know where he was. The cab driver is back, sir. Oh. Marco, where have you been? Senor, what a chase! You followed him? Uh, see, yeah, I wait by the dirt road. He come out, I follow him. Not too close, I don't want to get suspicious. Huh? Not too far, I don't want to lose him. Get to the point. Yeah, well, we drive to the River Tiber, cross the Ponte Cavour, and then, at the traffic light, almost I lose him, but no. Pew! I go straight through the red light. Excuse me, senor. Did you find his hideout? What I tried to tell you, senor. Where was I? Oh, I crossed the bridge, huh? Palace of Justice, and round the walls of the Vatican City, and then... And then... Well, and then what? I get a puncture. Senor, senor, Providence has a smile on me. Well, you got another flat? No, senor, no. Well, today, I meet an old friend. He's a taxi driver in Rome since I was a little boy. He knows everything, everybody. So I tell him how, you know, I follow Moncello, I get a flat tire. And do you know what he say, this friend? No, what, Michael? He knows, senor. He knows what? Well, aren't you hiding? No, not that, but almost as good. <coughs> Here is the address of the one person in Rome Uncello couldn't buy. His mother, signora. Signora Giula Uncello. I think we'll pay her a little visit. Uh, I did not get this for nothing, signor. Your friend charged you. Oh, si, signor. 10,000 lire. Mark. Well, to you, 5,000. I am sorry, Signor Templar, but I cannot help you. Signora Roncello, you realize that a young girl's life is in danger? Your son has threatened to kill her. I have no sons. I lost both my sons the day I lost my husband. He was a good man. He brought up his boys to respect God and justice. He died a broken man, Signor, ashamed and sickened by the two murderers who bore his name. Before I die, I hope someone will tell me. I'll tell you what, Signora? How such a thing can happen. How two young boys, Antonio Michele, can grow to what they are today. We were strict. We taught them right from wrong, and we loved them. And now, now they are criminals, ugly, evil, guilty. I'm sorry to have bothered you, Signora. If I knew where to find Antonio, I would tell you. I do not. But there is someone who might be able to help you, a girl. Maria Emanuele. She and Antonio were very close at one time. Where can I find her? She, she works as a singer at the, the club Alassia. Thank you, Signora. I'm sorry to have upset you. Arrivederla. I am not upset, Signor. Antonio and his brother mean nothing to me. Nothing. Antonio. Michele. I miei bambini. How, how did it happen? We still have 36 hours. Hudson. We're talking about our daughter. Every minute counts. This man is homicidal, a criminal. You don't have to spell it out for me. All you have to do to get Sue back is pick up that phone. Hudson, please, do it now. Mick Keston has killed two men. At 17, he'd already had six convictions. He's a hopeless, hate-filled sadist. I don't care. Do you know what a reprieve would mean? Yes, life imprisonment, not release. With the lawyers he has, it'll mean a new trial could easily mean release. Oh. No one else would even hesitate. 
I must have these few hours to try to fight this thing. I do have a certain duty as a governor. What about your duty as a father? You're the one for me. You're the one I see in my dreams at night. You're the one for Would you join us? I'm Simon Templer. This is Michael de Cesare. Signorina, a place. Oh, Signorina, you sing like angels. If I don't have a wife and seven children, if you have a wife and seven children, Signore, you should not be here. Signorina, I need some vitally important information. In fact, it's a, a matter of life and death. Where can I find Tony on cello? What is the matter with her? She's afraid. Wait in the cab. Get out! Please listen to me. I know absolutely nothing about Tony Uncello, and unless you get out, I'll call the manager. If I don't find Uncello in less than 36 hours, the young American girl who's never hurt anybody in her life is going to die. That's too bad. Meaning you don't care. Meaning I can't do anything about it. Now, get out! Where does he live? I don't know. Do you know anybody who does? No, I never see him anymore. But you used to. Years ago. Now, please, go! Maria, he's holding this girl somewhere in Rome. Right this minute at the American Embassy, her mother and father are waiting, out of their minds with worry and fear. If I can find Tony, he'll be put away for a long time. He'll never be able to get to you or hurt you. You don't know what you're talking about. Tony has men everywhere, in the police. Maybe in the Embassy itself. If you help me, I'll give you my word. Nothing will happen to you. I can't help you. Why are you so afraid of him? Why? I'll tell you why. I went against him once before. A long time ago. The police came to me then and said, it was my duty. Help us, they said, and we'll give you all the protection you need. Well, I believed them. So what happened? Three nights later, Tony came to my apartment. He said he wanted me to have something to remember him by. He gave me this. <laughs> What? Five hours later than New York time? No, ma'am. Six. It's four o'clock. So, we've got 14 hours left. That's right, ma'am. 14 hours. Mr. Benson, as a matter of interest, how would you feel if your daughter was in the hands of a man like Tony Uncielo? It's hard to say, Mrs. Inverest. Is it? Why? Surely it doesn't take that much imagination. Maud, what are you trying to do? Do you think I'm enjoying this? Do you think fear is your own private monopoly? I know what you're thinking, Mr. Benson. You feel that at a time like this, a man deserves all the help and sympathy he can get, especially from his wife. I know how you feel, Mrs. Inveris. Please let me finish. Hudson and I have been through a great deal together. When we married, he was an overworked and underpaid Latin professor. He wanted to get into politics, and I helped him. Maud, please! In all modesty, I think I can say that during the... 30 years we've been married, I've helped him a good deal. It's become a way of life for me. I'm going to miss it. Maud! Hudson, if anything happens to Sue, I'll leave you. She's right. Governor, she... You know she didn't mean what she said. She, she was just upset. No, I haven't any choice, so I'll have to give in. Give it a little longer, Governor. Uh, a lot can happen in 14 hours. 
Yes? Inspector Buono to see you, sir. Ask him to come in, please. Any news, Inspector? Excellenza, I am sorry. My men have been combing the city. We have found nothing. Not a trace. I understand how you feel. Surrender is against my principles, too, but... if you want to save your daughter's life, I think you must accept Uncello's terms. Now remember, Marco, four new tires. Not second-hand ones, new ones. Si, senor. But I know a man, he got... Big... Marco, I am paying for them. I'll be at the embassy about an hour. You can either wait for me or come back. Governor, I still think you should wait a little while longer. I can't. Reprieve a man from execution takes a certain amount of time. Operator, this is Governor Inveres speaking. I want to place a transatlantic call. Hold it. Operator, hold the line a moment, please. What is it? I've got on cello. What? What do you mean? I contacted one of his top men. Who? I can't say. I insist that you say. It is against the law to conceal this sort of thing from the police. Now, Inspector, be reasonable. One of Uncello's top boys wants out. He's told me everything. How the organization operates, and where Uncello is hiding. In return, I gave him my word that I'd keep quiet until nine tonight. Why did you do that? So that my contact could get out of Rome in one piece. Mr. Templer, I insist on knowing where you got this information. I'm afraid I can't tell you, Inspector. But at nine tonight, I will take you to Uncello's hideout. Unless you cooperate with the police in this matter, I shall be forced to arrest you. I see your point, Inspector Buono. Uh, however, Mr. Templer has just been appointed a special attaché of the American Embassy and therefore claims diplomatic immunity. Very well, Excellency. If you wish to handle this affair in your own way, I cannot stop you. Nor can I accept responsibility for your daughter's safety. In the meantime, I shall stand by. I'll go alert our security men. Yes, do that. And um, Mr. Benson. Yes, sir. Will you ask my wife to come down, please? Of course. Now that we are alone, who, who is this man? Governor, there isn't any man. What? It's a bluff, all of it. I don't understand. Governor, I'm counting on the curiosity angle. A man like Tony Uncello won't be able to stand not knowing which one of his men talked. You think he'll contact you? I'm sure of it. Within one hour, he'll have been told that someone ratted on him. Suppose he isn't told. Suppose you're wrong. All right, then, let's make certain I'm not. Call in the press, issue a statement, see that every newspaper in Rome gets it. Well, tell them to play it mysterious and big. You know, a traitor in the Uncello inner circle, that kind of stuff. Then we'll know for sure that Uncello will hear about it fast. They'll just shoot you down in the street. No, Governor. He's going to want to know who pulled the double cross. Even if he does contact you, even if you're taken to him, what will you be able to do? Well, Marco will tell me. As soon as he knows where I've been taken, he'll report to Inspector Buono. And what if you're killed? In that case, Governor, you place your transatlantic call.
you're the saint, huh? Tony. Sit down. Quite a layout. It's comfortable. To say the least. There's a lot more of it. You know, I could hold up here for years and live like the Ritz. Only nobody's supposed to know about it who don't belong to me. Body and soul. Is that so? I understand one of my boys talked. How did you find out so quickly? I have friends. Oh, where? Lots of places. Like the American Embassy? I'm asking the questions. Who talked? Nobody. I figured, as I couldn't find you, you'd want to find me if you thought that one of your boys had been talking too loud in my direction. I see. Well, now that you're here, what's your angle? Pour me a drink and I'll explain it. Uh, and then uh, they turned down the Via Pazzetto uh, in uh, number 47. I followed them, personally, myself. And then I turn right around and I come back to you. Will you find the way again? But of course. I'm ready. My men are waiting. Of course, I am acting as Governor Inverest's strictly unofficial representative. Yeah? Well, I suppose we stop fooling around, huh? Eh? And talk business? That's why I'm here. But first, I want to see the girl. Why? Make sure she's all right. Giorgio, get her. I should imagine this is for you. Yeah? Okay. Send him up and tell him to wait outside. You know, I've heard a lot about you. I've heard a lot about you, too. From your mother. <sighs> My mother. She's a thousand years behind the times. You know, I could have set her up in a swell apartment, given her everything she wants, but no, she's got to live in that mouse auditorium with a bunch of washed out and worn out memories. Sue, are you all right? Yes, I guess so. Come and sit down. They didn't hurt you, did they? No. Are they going to let me go? I'd say you'd be out of here in about two minutes. He's kidding you, honey. You think so? I knew I'd be picked up, remember, Tony? I arranged to be followed. Who by? A friend. As soon as he saw where your hatchet boys had brought me, he made straight for Inspector Buono. You think of everything, don't you? <laughs> well, let's say I try. Well, see if you thought of this one. Vittorio, tell him to come in. OK. Well, how's my old friend tonight? Ciao, Tony. You really are chummy, aren't we? Sure. Bono's one of my best boys. He had himself followed. Yeah, he told me. Who by? A taxi driver called uh, Marco Di Cesare. He came straight to me. Yeah? He talked to anybody else? I made sure he didn't. Where is he now? They have him downstairs. See how it is? Exactly. There isn't much time left. No. Well, you go back to the embassy. Keep in touch with Inverest and report back here to me and say, uh, two hours? Right. Tony, you win. I usually do. You understand, of course, that all Governor Inverest can do is grant your brother a reprieve. That means his sentence will be commuted to life imprisonment. That's all I want. Mick's got some good lawyers. They'll soon figure out a way to get him a new trial. I'll phone him. You know the number?
just got to say one wrong word. Can I speak to Governor Imbress, please? Remember, just one wrong word, and you'll be a real saint. Oh, Governor Imbress, I'm a Templar. Templar, what's happening? Is Sue all right? Yes, she's fine. Now, listen, Governor, you uh, have to meet on Cello's terms. Well, even if it isn't for the public good. For the public good. <laughs> or try it in Latin, it all boils down to the homo sequendum. Homo sequendum. Yes, that's right. As soon as Uncello hears from Kesson's lawyers that the reprieve has been granted, he'll let Sue go. I see. All right. Goodbye, Governor. What's with all this homo sequendum bit? Well, uh, homi means the same, sequendum means result. Sue's father goes for the Latin touch. He was trying to tell me something. The public good, he said. And it all boils down to the homo sequendum. What does that mean? Homo sequendum's Latin for the man who must be followed. Hudson, please, let's not wait any longer. I can't stand any more of this. He said as soon as Uncello heard that the reprieve was confirmed, he'd let Sue go. Then make the call. The public good. The man who must be followed. You're taking a lot of chances. Why? Hudson Inverest is a rich man. He's offered a $100,000 reward for the safe return of his daughter. Well, didn't Borna tell you? No. <laughs> Funny. He seemed pretty interested. Oh, but there, uh, inspectors and the police aren't paid that much in Italy, are they? Borna's reliable. 100000 is a lot of money. Vittorio, tell Mario to serve supper. Then send word to Borna I want to see him. Subito. Try it in Latin. Try it in Latin. Can you remember his exact words? The public good. Try it in Latin. It all boils down to the homo sequentum. Hudson, please. We can't wait any longer. running out. Why don't you shut up? <laughs> don't worry, Sue. We'll make the call. They better. Oh, for heaven's sakes, what are they doing? We placed the call a half an hour ago. Yes? Uh, wait a minute. It's Inspector Buono to see you. Have him come in. No, wait! I've got it. That's it. I've got it. Ask Bono to wait. Call the Italian Minister of the Interior quickly, quickly. You didn't eat much, honey. I wasn't hungry. Too bad. The way things are going, probably the last meal you're going to have. You too. I came as soon as I could. You hear from the embassy? Yes, the reprieve has been granted. Good. Well. I guess that just about winds things up. Except for him. Bono is your responsibility. Mine? Well, you can make it look like he was shot while resisting arrest. Do it yourself, huh? But this is dangerous for me. Oh, <laughs> a couple of the boys will come along to watch. You know, they're getting a little bit worried that uh, one of these days you might get too interested in a reward, if it was big enough. They feel that they'd like to have something on you. It'd give him a lot more confidence. All of a sudden, you're kind of quiet. The meek shall inherit the earth. Yeah. When the strong get through with it. Take him, Bono. Come on. 
You can't. You can't cold-bloodedly take him out and kill him. My father's done what you asked him to do. Why do you have to take him and kill him? Knock it off, honey, or a boy will do it right here. Come on. father a Latin scholar and you didn't know that Homer Sequendum met the man who must be followed? Oh, I knew that. But how did he know who to follow? Well, you remember that tag about for the public good? I told your father to try it in Latin. Well, pro bono publico. Uh-huh. Well, I was pretty sure that he'd be fast enough to turn the bono into buono. Buono man who must be followed. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm only sorry that there wasn't a reward, because you deserve it, Simon. He should get something, signorina. Well, I tell you what, I'll settle for buying you the best dinner in Rome and dancing until dawn. 